Before we dive into today's video, I just want to thank each and every one of you because as I checked this morning, we have surpassed 4,000 subscribers. We're actually at 4,004. 4,004 of you have felt the need or the want or the desire to follow this channel. And it has changed a lot since when I started it about five years ago. Um, but yeah, it's been about comic books the whole entire time. It will continue to be about comic books until I, you know, shut this channel down for whatever reason that might be. Hopefully it's, you know, because I decide to do that. But guys, thank you. Truly, truly. It's so amazing seeing this channel grow slowly and organically over time. And I appreciate all of you guys. And you guys have been tuning into the channel more and more. My videos are getting more and more views, more and more comments, more and more likes. And it's all because of you guys. You guys are amazing. Um, I'm not doing anything for this milestone. 4,000 um, is, you know, it's a cool one. But I think 5,000 is even cooler. So when I get to 5,000 subscribers, I will do a cool giveaway of some kind to give back to you guys, the community, for getting me to that milestone. And yeah, just thank you. You guys are so cool. You guys are comic book collectors, comic book enthusiasts, and you're just like me. And like, let's enjoy this hobby. Let's have a ton of fun with this hobby. Let's see where 2024, 2025, and beyond is gonna take Bruce and Stephanie comics. Hopefully I can get Stephanie back on here for a little while, even maybe like once a week, once a month. I shouldn't say once a week, that's gonna be too much. Maybe once a month, we'll make some kind of cool video for you guys. Yeah. I don't know. I got nothing else. You guys are the freaking coolest. And thank you guys so much for getting me to 4,000 subscribers. All right, guys, let's go ahead and dive in to today's video. What is going on, comic book fans? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another Final Order Cutoff Speculation and Recommendation video. This is the video where I scour Final Order Cutoff looking for all the books that I think might have a little meat on the bones for speculation. So that way me and you can start to try to make this hobby fund itself. But I also scour Final Order Cutoff looking for all the best books to pick up to read. Because you know, we're not in this hobby only to make money. No, we're in this hobby to also find the best reads of the week, in the month, in the year. So that is the recommendations part of this video. So speculation and recommendations. It's two things mashed together that I absolutely love. So guys, let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and cover my three weekly speculation reminders. If you guys have seen this video series before or you guys are seasoned speculators, you guys can look down in the description below and go right ahead and skip ahead to final order cutoff cover lever picks. But if you guys are new to speculation or new to this video series, please hear me out because these reminders are very important. And first up is the most important one and that is you guys have to do your own research. I am presenting some information to you guys today, but what I need you to do is go check out the comic book YouTubers you trust, other comic book websites that you trust, and other comic book apps that you trust. Gather the most information possible so that way you guys can make the best decisions possible for yourself. Because remember, you guys are spending your own hard-earned money on these books. It's not my money, it's your money. And the second reminder for you guys is that there are delays in comic books. It happens all the time. A book will be delayed for one reason or another, and that book will show up on Final Order Cutoff multiple times. All right, guys, and the third and final reminder that I have for you guys is that I record this video on Thursday. And today is Thursday, February 20th. 29th of 2024 and DC Marvel in the indie publishers have all the way up until their deadline dates which we'll cover in just a second to add and remove books so there's a good chance that there is a book that I'm going to talk about today that might not be on final order cutoff when it gets to the deadline dates or maybe there are books that are going to be added after I record this video so to keep up to date I suggest following these two places first is the comic book frontier it's a Facebook group run by my good friend Al his uh, link is down in the description below. He's a fantastic dude and he will update his list all the way up until the final order cutoff order deadline dates. You can find him on Instagram as well, but I would highly suggest joining the Facebook group. Again, link down in the description below. And the second place is coverprice.com. They're a fantastic website and they post their list on Sundays, which is fantastic because that's right before the order deadline dates. So that way you guys can collect all your information and make the best decisions possible for yourself. All right, guys, let's go ahead and cover this weekend's final order cutoff order deadline dates. 
All right, guys, if you're interested in picking up any of the books that I'm gonna talk about in today's video, you guys need to get your orders in by March 3rd for your DC Scout or Vault books and March 4th for your Marvel and all the other indie publishers. Now, before we dive into our cover liver picks for this weekend's final order cutoff, I just wanna remind you, the reason why you wanna get your pre-orders in by these dates is because normally your order will be discounted to up to 20%-ish. I'm sure there's some place that might give a little bit more, some a little less, but that is why you wanna get your orders in by the state. So if you like a book for speculation and you wanna order a large quantity of them, even just five, and you can get 20% discount on that book, that is a good idea because you're trying to make the most money possible on these books, so getting a discount is always a good way to go. All right, guys, that is this weekend's final order cutoff, order deadline dates. Let's go ahead and kick this video off with checking out my cover lover picks. All right, guys, I found eight total covers on this weekend's final order cutoff that I can see doing well on the secondary market, either right out of the gate or in the future. And first up is Harley Quinn, issue number 38, the cover C, which is the Women's History Month variant done by Sozo Micah. Now, Sozo Micah has done a lot of Women's History Month variants, so you'll be seeing those a lot on the channel because I think her artwork is absolutely fantastic, and I can see a lot of her artwork doing well 10 15 years, 20 years down the line. So I'm guessing a lot of these covers are gonna be long-term holds, but get them now, sell them later. All right, guys, next up is Power Girl issue number seven with the cover D, which is the Women's History Month variant done by Sozo Micah. I actually like this one more than the Harley Quinn one. Um, maybe it's because Power Girl looks a little bit more sexy, but both are absolutely fantastic. But guys, next up is the Immortal Thor issue number nine with the one in 50 virgin ratio variant done by Karen S. Darby or Darbo. This is gorgeous. This is absolutely fantastic. Now there is a version with the trade dress which takes away from the rarity of this cover a little bit, but the virgin looks so much better. And with this being Thor, it might not be too hard to get because a lot of stores probably do order a lot of Thor, but maybe it could be a little bit more rare because you do have to order 50 of them to get a copy of this, but really, really gorgeous cover. Now next up is the Sensational She-Hulk issue number seven with the one in 25 ratio variant done by David Nakayama. I gotta be honest with you guys, I do not love this cover. I do not hate it, but I do not love it. But it's David Nakayama, it's a one in 25. It's issue seven of Sensational She-Hulk. So there are some factors in there that could make this cover a little bit more rare. Um, and it's David Nakayama. He's very popular, so I can see this cover doing well. Now next up is a really freaking cool cover. This is Spider-Man Shadow of the Green Goblin, issue number one with the variant cover done by Mike Del Mundo. Okay, so I will admit, I am a huge Mike Del Mundo fan. I think almost every single piece of artwork this guy do does, it's like a home run or just like, it's so good. And this one with the Green Goblin coming out of the back of what looks like Norman Osborn's head with pumpkin bombs filling his head, that is really freaking cool. And there is a little bit something in the guts. So this is just a gorgeous variant cover done by Mike Del Mundo with something in the guts. That's a little bit of recipe for something good. The next up is Spider-Man Shadow of the Green Goblin issue number one with the one in 25 ratio variant done by Alex Maleev. I don't love it. I don't hate it, but it is a one in 25. It's Alex Maleev, it's Spider-Man. I'm showing to you guys, you guys make your own decision. Now next up are two freaking amazing covers. Next up is Vengeance of the Moon Knight, issue number four, with the one in 25 ratio variant done by Alexander Lozano. Alexander Lozano's over there, he's right here. Guys, this cover is freaking fantastic. I just wish there was something in the guts, but this to me is a pure cover buy. Um, it is issue number four. So that still is kind of early in the run. Jeb McKay's run is very popular. This is a super cool book. So I don't think this book is gonna be super duper rare, but guys, if you can land this, I can see this doing really well in the future just based on the artwork looking so freaking good. Now next up is an exclusive, and I normally try not to put exclusives on this list because I don't know, they haven't done well in the secondary market, but when you see a cover that looks really freaking good, you just gotta put it on the list. You just gotta. And this is X-Men issue number 33, the Unknown Comics exclusive foil virgin variant done by David Nakayama. Now when you compare this cover to the Sensational She-Hulk cover, you can see why the Sensational She-Hulk cover isn't that great when you compare it to this. This is like David Nakayama like bringing it, man. He's like bringing the freaking heat. And I think the kids say, this cover slaps, or that's something they would say. I hate that I just said that, 
But I feel like, you know, I, I want to bring in some young viewers. I got to speak their language. But this cover, seriously, though, is so freaking good. And that is my last cover lover pick for this weekend's final order cutoff. Let's go ahead and cover my second prints, third prints, facsimiles, and beyond. One quick reminder before I dive into the second prints. I make my list for this video Wednesday. And then I always check the websites that I use for the site. Those websites are linked down in the description below um, for any additions or subtractions to this list. Now, I had five second prints yesterday and they added a sixth overnight. So guys, that is why I say, make sure you're following the comic book frontier and checking cover price on Sunday because they're gonna have the most up-to-date information for this weekend's final order cutoff. Again, I make this video so early because it just fits in my schedule best this way. And I like to be the appetizer for you guys' main courses later this this weekend. That's why I consider this video your appetizer for final order cutoff. All right, guys, let's go ahead and check out these second prints. First up is Avengers Twilight issue number three with the second print variant done by Alex Ross. Now, next up is Edge of Spider-Verse issue number one with the second print variant done by Chad Harden. Guys, the first print for this is doing really well in the secondary market. It's $20 plus. I had no idea this book was gonna sell so well on the secondary market, but I'm absolutely shocked. I should have pushed this more for you guys because spider books always sell. I don't know, they always do. The next up is the better cover for this book. It's Edge of Spider-Verse issue number one, the second print variant, but this is the one in 25 ratio variant for the second print variant, which is a virgin for the Mamad Asar variant. It is so gorgeous. This was the foil uh, for the first print and they're bringing it back for the one in 25 ratio for the second print which is pretty cool. Now next up is Cemetery Kids Don't Lie, issue number one with the second print variant done by Daniel. I don't know how to pronounce this person's last name and I could take a minute and try to figure it out, but I'm just gonna move on. Next up is Six Fingers, issue number one with the second print variant done by Sumit Kumar and Lee Lorridge. And yeah, I'm glad to see more indies get second prints and Six Fingers was supposed to be a fantastic read. Um, I'm an idiot and I didn't pick him up. Six Fingers, and I forgot what the other um, companion book to this one is, but yeah, they're supposed to be fantastic reads. Now the last second print is Duke, issue number two, with the second print variant done by Jason Howard. I do not have the artwork for both Six Fingers and Duke, so guys, make sure, again, following uh, cover price in the comic book frontier, and they will have those images for you later this weekend. All right, guys, guess what? They added three more second prints to this weekend's final order cutoff while I was editing the video, so here they are. First up is Batman issue number 143, the second print variant, and Batman issue number 144, the second print variant. Covers for those have not been released just yet, but they are on the list. And the last one up is John Constantine Hellblazer, Dead in America, issue number one with the second print variant. All right, guys, that is it for Second Prince and Beyond. Let's go ahead and move over to the next session, which are the books that actually have a little speculation in the guts. All right, guys, with the information that I have at my disposal so far, I was only able to find five books that had a little something in the guts. So let's go ahead and check these books out. First up is Batman Dark Age issue number one with the origin of Batman and how his development as a character has evolved alongside the growth of America and world culture. And after that is the Immortal Thor issue number nine with the possible introduction of Chad Hammer, a corporate mascot version of Thor in the employ of Roxxon. And this is also the lead in to Roxxon Presents Thor, the one shot, which is going to be the Roxxon Thor issue, which is either going to be really funny or really dumb. Now, next up is Spider-Man Shadow of the Green Goblin, issue number one, with the origin of Proto Goblin, the research assistant that preceded Norman Osborn as the first test subject of the Goblin formula. So this is that little something that's in the guts to those two um, Spider-Man Shadow of the Green Goblin covers that I showed earlier. Now, next up is Venom, issue number 32. Now, the synopsis reads, in the greatest depths of space and at the end of existence within the flowering fauna of the symbiotic garden of time, some carnivorous new species has blossomed. That's the line right there. Some carnivorous new species has blossomed. Is this new species going to be a new venom of some kind? I don't know. This is all speculation. Maybe the comic book frontier will have more information or maybe a cover price on Sunday. I don't know. Make sure you're checking. Um, and the end of the synopsis reads, something blood red with thorns 
in an appetite. Now, the last book that I want to show you guys is Beneath the Trees Where Nobody Sees, issue number five. Now, I added this purely due to the popularity of the book. I have checked online. I'm on eBay. The first issue of this book is still selling really well, around $70 for near mint copies. Issue two is sell selling around $20, and the you know third one is not selling as well, and I'm, I'm sure it's going to drop off over time. But if this book picks up popularity or gets more popular as the further it goes, think something is killing the children. I can see these later issues that aren't being picked up as much growing in value. So again, I'm just presenting some information to you guys. The first and second issues of this sell pretty well, especially that first issue. So issue five will be a little bit more of a gamble, but that's all what speculation is. All right, guys. That is everything. We've done cover lover picks, Sega Prince and Beyond, um, and then yeah, the books that had something in the guts. So let's go ahead and find out what my spec picks of the week are. All right, guys, this is a week where I'm not going to tell you to purely save your money. I would say make sure you guys are heavily doing your research before you guys order any of these books based on my opinion. It's something that's super important to me. You guys do your own research. But first up is a cover buy. It is the Immoral Thor issue number nine, the one in 50 ratio variant done by Karen S. Darbo. This cover is absolutely fantastic. Now, it does have a little something in the guts with the possible first appearance of Chad Hammer, which is gonna be the mascot version of Thor for Roxxon, which isn't everything. It's all about this cover. This cover is absolutely amazing. I'm totally blanking on the name of this character. I'm, I'm, I'm an idiot. I'll put it up on screen because I'm sure I will remember this while I'm editing. But this cover is, it is so good. It's a skull cover. You got this gorgeous woman on the cover. You got just gorgeous artwork. This is a fantastic. So something a little bit in the guts in a great cover in a high ratio at one in 50 of issue number nine of Thor. So that all together could be a good recipe for a decent buy. Now let's go back to those Spider-Man Shadow of the Green Goblin issue number one, the Mike Del Mundo variant and the Alex Maleev one in 25. With that something that's in the gut, which is the origin story of the Proto Goblin, maybe that's something. Spider characters are always super popular. Now this is going to be a spider villain. Does that mean something? I'm not sure. Follow your gut, do your research, but I really like this Mike Del Mundo. I really do. It's super cool. It's green screen goblin or proto goblin, and I just really, really like it. And the last cover up to take a look at is Vengeance of the Moon Knight, issue number four, that one in 25 ratio variant done by Alexander Lozano. It is so stinking gorgeous. I myself am going to try to get a copy as long as it's under ratio. If I can get it under ratio, I'm 100% going to buy it. But if it is under ratio, that means the book is probably highly ordered um, from the shops that are picking this book up and going to have enough copies to make this under ratio price. So, but I'm also going to look this as a long term buy. If I can get this, like, you know, in good quality, put it in a slab and just hold on to it. I can see this being worth some money in the future. Now, the last book that I want to talk to you guys about is The Edge of Spider-Verse, issue number one, the second print, one in 25 ratio variant done by Mumad Asar. With the popularity, with the first print of this book, I can see this cover doing really well. But also the cover A for the second print, that is the one that is doing really well on the secondary market right now is that cover A. But this one in 25, of the second print is going to be a lot more rare than the cover A second print. So, I don't know. Pick them both up if you can. And that's really it. I think the books that had something in the guts so far, there's nothing really appealing to me to be picking up a bunch of cover A's of any of those books. Um, but guys, make sure you guys are staying tuned to the Comic Book Frontier and CoverPrice.com. They're going to have more information for you guys later in the week before you guys put your orders in. So... That is it for me. Those are my spec picks of the week. Some gorgeous covers and some really cool second prints. All right, guys, let's go ahead and move over to this weekend's final order cutoff, Recommendations to Read. And there are two really cool books. All right, guys, the first book that we're going to talk about that is a recommendation to read is Sam and Twitch Case Files, issue number one, coming from the writer of Todd McFarlane and has amazing art by Zyman Gordinsky. There's not much of a synopsis for this book. The synopsis was super lame. It's basically Tom McFarlane writing Sam and Twitch, which are police detectives in the Spawn universe. And it's going to be fun. 
and it's going to have artwork by Simon Kradinsky. Do you really need more to be picking this book up? Amazing artwork and an okay writer in the Spawn universe. I'm not a huge fan of Tom McFarlane's writing. That's why I probably why I continue picking up Spawn, diving in, reading it, not loving it, and just continue collecting it because it's a good book to have to sell in the future. But I'm really excited for this. Sam and Twitch are the coolest characters within the Spawn universe, in my opinion. When they were in there in the early run, it was just so freaking cool. And yeah, I'm really pumped for this. And also, the Simon Kredinsky art is going to be so good. Now, the other book is a book that I'm excited for because I love the writer. And the synopsis and the idea and the concept for this book is so good. Guys, I'm talking about... Monsters Are My Business, issue number one, coming from the writer of Cullen Bunn and has art by Patrick Pizza Lugara. Lunga. Piazza Lunga. I'm butchering that. I'm trying my best, Patrick, but this looks like a ton of fun. Just look at this cover, guys. This cover is amazing. You got like tentacles, and then you got this little itty bitty car with like this giant, like barbarian type dude in the back, and like this other girl with spectacles i'm guessing she's a sorceress of some kind and then you got a koala on the front with a chainsaw and it's gonna be monsters on my business that right there i'm in just based on the cover but let me go ahead and read the synopsis for you guys meet tanner grizz grizzholm along with a shrewd necromancer who wants him dead in a chainsaw wielding koala bear named cuddles as he wages a bloody war against nightmares from beyond time and space it's thankless work, but someone has to do it. And when a group of government contractors go missing in the nightmare landscape of the flooded zone, Grizz stumbles into a mystery he may not be able to carve out of his way. His old biker pals, the Halloween Gargoyles, are up to no good, and the memories might be too much for Grizz to handle. So it looks like Grizz might be the giant barbarian dude, but he's, I guess, like a biker guy. I'm not 100% sure. I really don't care. If you guys have been following this channel long enough, you know I'm a big Cullen Bunn fan. He is a fantastic writer. He really is really good. And when he does horror, he does a really good job. And this is kind of going to be like, I think, comedy and horror mixed together. That just sounds like a recipe for delicious, good comic book goodness. And I'm pumped. I'm really pumped for this. And sadly, there are no variant covers, but that's kind of good sometimes because that means they're really focusing on just the story. And it's from Dark Horse. Dark Horse has been putting out some really good stuff lately. So, Colin Bunn, Patrick Piazza Lunga, Lunga. Oh my God, I'm so sorry, Patrick. Um, monsters, funny, Colin Bunn, I don't know. Pick this book up, guys. This sounds really freaking cool. Support this book. Uh, and yeah, hopefully this book is going to be a ton of fun. All right, guys. That is my final order cutoff recommendations to read. I do have some new comic book day cover lover picks for next week's new comic book day that we got to talk about. So, guys, stay tuned for that because it's coming up right now. All right, guys, next week's new comic book day is Wednesday, March 6th of 2024. We're into March already, which blows my stinking mind. But guys, there are three, six, nine, 12, no, 11, 11 covers that I found on next week's new comic book day that I think could do well on the secondary market in the future. So let's go ahead and dive into these covers. First up is Batman issue number 145, the cover D variant, which is the one in 25 ratio variant done by Matteo Sclera. Matteo Sclera has been crushing it at DC Comics over the, the last three months. He's been putting out banger covers, and I'm a big Batman fan. And this cover, with Batman on a building, with the light behind him, is just stunning. Stunning. So, I like it because it's Batman. It's a 1 in 25, so it's going to be a little bit more rare than all the other covers for, for issue number 145. There's nothing in the guts, so this is a pure cover buy. But there are Batman fans that will spend money on pure cover buys, and I'm one of them. All right, guys. Next up is Ultimate X-Men issue number 1. Obviously, this was going to be on the list. Now, I do have the regular cover A. It is, you know, Peach Momoko, and this is probably going to be your best one to go after if this book is going to be as popular as Black Panther and Spider-Man. And if it is, then this is probably the cover to go after. But the cover that I love, can you guys guess what it is? Take a second. Write down in the comments. This is what I guess your favorite cover for Ultimate X-Men is because it's the one that is done by Dykeruan. Daigruan's covers are just so freaking good. And this one right here is just amazing. Maystorm looks amazing. 
armor looks amazing. Everything about this is so stinking good. Now, there are some other good covers for this issue, but these two are the ones that I think are good speculation picks. The next up is Poison Ivy issue number 20 with the cover D variant, which is the Women's History Month variant done by Sozo Micah. I told you guys, she's doing all the ones for the Women's History Month for DC Comics. And this one right here is really good. It's Poison Ivy, it's delicious, it's Sozo Micah. Might not do well right out of the gate because, it, again, it is open order, but it's so good. I can see in the future people wanting this and paying extra for it. So next up is Poison Ivy, issue number 20, the cover E, which is the 1 in 50 virgin ratio variant done by David Nakayama. As I mentioned in, I think, the last video, um, this is part of a connecting cover set. Um, all done by David Nakayama, and it kind of has Poison Ivy through the ages. It's like three stages, like back in the 60s, like in the 90s, and today. Um, and if so you can see her transformation as a villain, and it's pretty stinking cool. So if you're into that, this 1 in 50 is the one you probably want to go after. Now next up is a really cool Star Wars cover. Now I cannot remember the name of this character. I want to say it's Landau, but I'm probably wrong. But this is Star Wars issue number 44, the 1 in 25 ratio variant done by David Marquez. David Marquez, man, one in 25, Star Wars, gorgeous, amazing, I love it. Again, I'm not a big Star Wars fan, but when you see a cover, like the kids say, that slaps like this, so good, so good. Guys, now next up is Birds of Prey, issue number seven. This is the cover D, which is the Women's History Month variant done by Sozo Micah. This is probably the one I like the least of them, but it's Sozo Micah, it's Black Canary, it's Birds of Prey. These covers, you know, I can see them doing well in the future. Now next up is Birds of Prey issue number seven, the cover C variant done by Pablo's Villabos. This is the one that I absolutely love. This is freaking gorgeous. It's Lobos, it's Birds of Prey. That's, I don't need to say anything else. Probably it's open order. So not right out of the gate, but in the future for sure. Next up, the Sensational She-Hulk issue number six with the variant cover done by Ben Harvey. Ben Harvey, man, so stinking good. And again, probably not right out of the gate because this is open order, but in the future, 100%, I can see this doing well because it is so, so good. And Ben Harvey, again, he's been doing so many amazing covers over at Marvel Comics right now. The next up is a really cool cover, Thanos issue number four, the snap variant done by justin mason it's just one of those covers man it is so cool and how many times have they done this i've never seen a cover done like this before and i can see this in the future when everyone forgets about it and then it gets popular again for whatever reason doing really well now the next cover is probably a little bit of a stretch or a guess or a gamble whatever you guys want to say but i love it i really really love it and again, it's one of those covers that I'm going to try to get myself and just hold on to it and see if it get, does well in the future. It is Giant Size Spider-Gwen issue number one with the 1 in 25 ratio variant done by Betsy Cola. It's gorgeous. It's Betsy Cola, man. I think her artwork is like underrated. It is so good. Her cover for Hellcat is still one of my favorites. I haven't picked it up like a freaking idiot. But this one right here delicious it's it's spider gwen and you got both versions of herself the superhero and the the rock star taking a selfie together <laughs> like that's so cool and that's it that's gonna be it for today's video um yeah so let's go ahead and wrap this video up all right guys we are at the end of today's video and a huge thank you again needs to go out to each and every one of you who are subscribed to the channel you guys are everything you guys seriously get me in this seat, in my bedroom, in my little set, every single week, making my two weekly videos, and then trying to be consistent in making a third really entertaining, really cool video for you guys. And it's seriously your support. So guys, I you guys are legends. I, I say it every single week. I've been saying it for like over a year now at the end of my videos. You guys who stay from the beginning to the end are just like the best legends that there are. So again, you guys are legends and thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, look down real quick. Have you guys hit that like button just yet? Did I say quick? Quick, look down real quick. Have you guys hit that like button just yet? Do me a favor, if you haven't, smash that like button. If you guys enjoyed that video and you guys enjoy combo content and you're not subscribed, first off, what are you doing? But then get yourself subscribed, hit that bell for notifications and 
smash that like button. All right, guys, I will have the video tomorrow on Friday. It's going to be a product, not review, but a product showcase. It's going to be showcasing a really cool product. I have it shot. I'm going to edit it today after I finish this video. And yeah, so I'll expect that tomorrow at noon. I'll probably drop it at noon tomorrow. So I hope you guys are excited for that. It's going to be super duper fun. All right, guys, have yourself a great weekend, a great final order cutoff, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.